recently, everyone. Um, we're just talking to our family elders and getting a little insight on their life and uh, seeing how things were back in their day as opposed to ours. I think nowadays, you know, with technology and social media, they had a covered so wagon. <laughs> there's uh, there's so many distractions, so we're living life a lot differently, you know, than they have. Um, so all these things that have happened in the past, uh, World War II, that you know, they really experience that a lot differently. We've been living through a war, and I think a lot of us half the time don't know what's going on because we're looking at someone's, you know, uh, selfie at the gym. <laughs> We're <laughs> <laughs> selfie drinking vodka. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, you know, so it would be just be nice to hear how they felt during those times, uh, and just see how life is so much different then. So, as we're waiting for Mayor, um, let's kind of just start this going, and then we'll catch her right in. Um, because it's getting kind of dark and none of us, uh, including myself at 32, I can't even see what's on this paper anymore. <laughs> uh, so just, if you know, speak up when you want to, okay? Don't feel too obligated to answer. Um, but let's just start with number one. Uh, what do you remember about your parents or your grandparents? People that we maybe haven't met before. Can you tell us a little bit about them? Papa? I'm starting? Yeah. <laughs> well, I had a really, really wonderful mother. And thank God she was around to help raise Bill. <laughs> her, name was, I, her name was Joe. Love her, that. Her Mary Joe. And Joe. I've, I had the pleasure of meeting her as well. And uh, I was very fortunate that way. How many people met Joe here? Yes. Angela, did you meet Joe? Mom, yes, yes, you, yes did. you did. You did? Get yes. your damn hand up, damn it. Dan, did you meet Joe? Yes. Yes. Where's your hand? Oh. <laughs> it's a rich hand, but get it up. Damn it. Okay. Yeah, Joe just told him, and so did. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Anybody else want to share? My Marilyn? mom was like uh, his oh. mom, Mary Jo. Right. They were yeah. wonderful. And one of my favorite pictures, actually, is a family reunion picture with both uh, great grandmas walking with my dad at the beach, and he looks pretty sauced, and they're helping him in the sand, and it's the greatest photo, though. Oh. Um, but they always were there at the family reunions at, at Jim's house. Well, how many saw awesome. Grammy d down there at the Jim's house? Yes. Did everybody see Grammy? Yes. Grammy was awesome. She would always say, for mercy's sake. No, mercy yeah. me. She say, mercy me. It was really cute lady. Really uh, there were, cute. There were three grandmas yeah. who right. came to the beach. <laughs> and Betty. They all, they all died the same year, and they were all 95. That's oh. amazing. That's amazing. Well, how many saw Betty? Everybody must yeah. see Betty. Oh. Oh. Betty, yeah. Joe, and yeah. Bert. Cool. Yeah. That was amazing. When's the last year we saw all three of them down at the beach at your house? Right. What, what year? year? What year? The first time? No, no, no. all three the last time. Did they die more than once? They died. What year was it? Danny. Is this your vision, Amy? Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Nailing it. Absolutely. 2001 yes. is when my mother died. Wow. So I, I think that was the last year. They wow. all died in that year, I think it's in 2001. So they were, we saw them all down at the beach at one time, all yes, three of them. the last reunion that we had in 2001. That's pretty cool. And our mother worked very, very hard to help our family sustain themselves. Things were never good. We were depression family. Mom worked during the war for Payne Furnace Company in Beverly Hills and built drop tanks for P-38s. She was a riveter. Rosie. Wow. Rosie. Betty wow. Riveter. Wow. She was Rosie the Riveter. That's awesome. Wow. Mom, That's awesome. mom was a Riveter? Our mom was, yeah. Their mom. Their mom was a Rosie the Riveter. That's incredible. That's, That's amazing. Fun. Well, my wife worked at Douglas. <laughs> tell us about it. Yeah, tell us about it, Mom. Tell us about it. Uh, he was away in the service, and I worked swing shift there. And I worked at night, so I wouldn't get in trouble. 
What kind of trouble? <laughs> Not much fun. It'd be hard with your husband away all the time. It'd be very hard. Well, uh, during the war, did you want to tell us about that? Well, my dad was a doctor, and uh, I just remember the end of World War II. Um, <clears throat> Everybody was jumping up and down to Beverly Hills. The end of the war, uh, when World War II ended, I think it ended in Germany. Or in the Pacific. Come over here to say you're on your way. Hi! Everybody jumping up and down and having a good time. Just say you're on your way. World War II. Well, we're coming. My father took us down Hollywood Boulevard. I had a trombone and I sat in the back of the back seat of the trombone and blew that lady out the window. I was only 11 or 12 years old. Oh, you're, you're 10. <laughs> but that was a big thing when the war ended. We lived through something that I hope none of the rest of you ever have to live through. So Ronnie, your dad was in the World War II then? He was in World War One. World War One. Yeah. Now, were you in the service? Air Force. You were in Air Force. And what, and, and, and the world, the Korean War? No, that was Bob. You were in Vietnam War? No, I was, I was activated in the Air Force during the Cuban conflict. Okay. So, that's <laughs> so you were in Cuba where Sean was in Cuba? Yeah, well, well, I was trying to stay in college and not be in I'd be, I'd be not into the war, but it didn't work. <laughs> Where's Marilyn, Ronnie? She's, She's on her way down. She's babysitting, Dad. Hey, what about you, Papa? What about me? What? Yeah. You were also, tell everyone, I don't know if everyone knows. About your service. You were in the Air Force as well? Yes, I was. Uncle Sam taught me how to fly. Wow. And uh, I went in the Air Force. Wow. In the Korean War, fighter pilot in the Korean War. That's about it. Well, how many Koreans did you Oh, I will that? tell you a quick story. Uh, I went over to, un unfortunately, Jan was pregnant when I went to Korea. And, uh, I'm With who? Mitch or me? <laughs> For Mitchell. Bill, you were Mitchell. an accident. You came over. <laughs> 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 I pity the fool. Peter and Lori. <laughs> 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 they, they talk about the heroes in the war. I actually stopped the Korean War. <laughs> Personally. I got, I got to Korea. I was I was combat ready in an F-86 and F-80s both. But the guys that were there in the F-80s wanted to upgrade to the 86, so they stayed. And I had a, I didn't get to make combat missions for three months. Finally, I'm going on my first combat mission in Korea. And I was combat ready when I got there. I'm going out, I fired up the engine, we're taxiing out, I've been briefed by Jock, and they aborted the mission. And I said, why? They said, because they surrendered. Uh, <laughs> true story. For you. Uh, absolute true story. <laughs> wow. They heard I was coming. <laughs> Bob Mays knocks him dead. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, it was a true story, though. <laughs> That's awesome. I had nothing to do with it, but it's a true story. <laughs> and you were an airline pilot one it makes time, Makes a good right? story. Oh, Tell yeah. us that. What airline? I've done all that crap. Tell what airline? TWA. What's oh. that stand for? Yeah. Travel without a rival. Teeny Weeny Airlines. <laughs> <laughs> Teeny Weeny Airlines. Travel without a rival. That's what that stands for. Okay, so I thought it was try walking that, across. Um, but hey. Is there anything yeah. someone wanted to be when they grew up, when they were younger, that uh, you know was really the thing they were going for and didn't work out? Grandy, oh, did you have work something? Out, what I wanted to be was a mother. Aww. 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 Your leftover queen. That's awesome. What about what you, Grammy? What about you, Mayor? Come on, Grammy. Oh, I like what I got. Well, I, I want oh, we got two Mary. <laughs> you are. You just got like a photo shoot. Uh -huh. <laughs> a few months ago. Hey, oh. Living dream. Oh, yeah. I, I wanted to be a mother, too. So I, that happened. And 
I love it. Now your grandma. Wow, oh, I don't know that that was ever my uh, <laughs> top of my list for reader. <laughs> uh, what about you, Mary Robbins? What about you? No, I think we girls of the olden days, that's kind of what we wanted to be. <laughs> a happy marriage and have great kids. No, yeah. Marilyn, Marilyn, you went to college, so you were college educated. What did you oh, want to be? I might have been too. I, I graduated from UCLA in librarianship. So I went to work at Douglas Aircraft as an engineering librarian for nine years. Wow! Wow! Oh, so I did, I did all the purchasing of <coughs> material, reading materials for Douglas Aircraft. You were a buyer for? You're kidding me! No. You were. That's a prestigious no, position right now, being a buyer for an aircraft company. Are you get, no, you no, hold no. the strings of. It's for their. For their miniature books and magazines. And oh, okay, books. okay. But okay. then when they moved there, they but moved their facility to Huntington Beach. And I was in there Culver City. A lot of people don't know this, but listen to this. Yeah. Listen to this. Hey, 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 Angela, listen uh, Oh, wow. <laughs> Maryland, Maryland was on the float, the Rose Bowl float. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Awesome. She was a princess on the float of the Rose Bowl. In Beverly Hills, like Miss The Beverly. only one, the only queen. That's the only awesome. float that Beverly Hills has ever had in the Rose Parade. Woo! Wow! wow. Really? Yeah. I was, how about that? I was yeah. 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 Woo! She's hot still, huh? <laughs> okay, so what, what were our favorite things about school? Jim? Getting out. Getting out of school. Getting out. And what's your favorite thing then? Traveling the world. Is there a favorite place that you've gone? Well, obviously. Because you've been everywhere. The world. <laughs> I've, I've been to. Um, India's got to be a highlight. I've been to seven continents. I've been to Europe 30 times. Wow. Uh, what other. How many countries can I give you? But he's only How been in the valley countries? like twice. I just <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my God. Okay, day. I've been to India 40 times. I haven't been in the valley, though. <laughs> I guess I can't name the great Bob's house. Do you want to hear him or not? <laughs> okay, go ahead. All right, go ahead. Uh, I didn't know how to name the Great Lakes either, but I taught Marilyn. I know, once he hears it. It's home. Huron, Ontario, Michigan, Erie, and Superior. Wow. And I never knew anything about the Erie Canal. The Erie Canal was built from... It's across the state of New York, which we went across. Tell it, Jimmy. It was built before there were railroads or cars. So it was the only means of commerce that they had to move goods. I just came out. So, so we learned about that, and then we went down the Hudson River, and we went into to the uh, New York Harbor. We got the Statue of Liberty, took pictures. I mean... Traveling the world is great, but traveling the United States is also very good. Cool. That's mine great was one. really difficult. He was in first grade, now he's in kindergarten. That wasn't too hard. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> same school? Same school. Yeah. Yeah. That's the cradle school. Oh, yeah. Kindergarten first grade. When did you guys get together? <laughs> As, as a family, we got together almost every Sunday night. That's it. Yep. Bob and Marilyn and Denny and I. Oh, really? Our families always got together. We were very, very close and have remained so. Alternated Sundays for dinner. Every Sunday. And That's amazing. We lived close together in Beverly Hills, so we could do that. The dads would listen to the baseball game, and the kids would play badminton. And the moms would sit on the swing of whatever stringing beans or whatever they were doing, getting ready for dinner. That's amazing. It was a pretty good time. Yeah. And we'd watch Ed Sullivan. I think it's turned out pretty well. Yeah. So what was your favorite radio program when you were a child? Favorite what? Radio program. Shadow. Oh, uh, Jack Benny. Daddy Jack should be up there I too. He was on a oh, car. Oh, my hands. I'll kick her. No, he didn't hear me. Angela, we heard you back here. Yeah. 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 Well, um, Grandy, how did you and Papa meet? 
On Twitter. Getting off the bus, <laughs> in the car, and I was walking along. He saw me and Barney calling on the telephone. <laughs> what would you guys do on dates? How old were you? Yeah, yeah. we'll never that? tell. <laughs> yeah, how old were you when you Those guys? Those bras met? were tough. Well, I was just out of high school, and he had been out one year, so we were and he had a car. Uh, <laughs> uh, I went. Oh, he was. Uh, he went to the wedding where I was a bridesmaid, and we sort of met there, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she married a tennis player. Yeah, well, she married. What did you guys do on dates? You go to the drive-in or movies? What did Dolores is driving on that? A malt. Remember Dolores is driving on Rosa Boulevard? Yeah. 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 Born. Just a minute, I went there. Well, then we didn't get to hear how you met. Yeah. Yeah. Pablo. Well, I, I was working in Culver City, and at a lunchtime, uh, the gal that took care of the telephone thing. The switchboard? Or? Yeah, switchboard. the switchboard. She was going off for lunch, so the rest of us, one gal would go and, and sit there and take care of the switchboard, and I would sit next to her and keep her company, and he came in one day at lunch. I worked for IBM selling typewriters. And our controller was out for lunch, so we couldn't see him. So he sat down next to me by the switchboard and started talking to me and wanted to know who I was and so forth. And a quarter to five that afternoon, I got a phone call from him oh. asking me to go out there. Oh. <laughs> oh. He was that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it just so happened that someone else that I was dating was out of town. Listen, I became her meal ticket for a while. She was buying her dinner. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's how we met. Oh, that was great. <laughs> okay, so what what can do you want your grandchildren to learn from you? What kind of things do you want to pass on to the next generation? I want them all to be uh, nice people. Let's not be bad. Let's not hate anyone. When I was growing up, you know, my mother always said, if you can't say something nice about someone, don't say anything at all. Mm -hmm. yes. And that's what I want my grandchildren to know. And I want them to have a happy, healthy, really good life. Aw, thanks, Grammy. You're so cute. It's beautiful. <laughs> all right, I will. <laughs> okay. That. Well, I think the healthy is working. You have a family full of <laughs> what about you guys? What do you want to pass on, Ron? Pretty much the same. Have me healthy and successful life. Yeah. And the genuine thing is nice too, and not saying anything negative. Like on social media, I feel like people are so quick to spit out their opinions and be very aggressive with it. And you know, just a little bit more respect for everyone when we're nice. Uh, what about you, Papa? What do you want to pass on to us? I can't top what Marilyn said. That, that was pretty really nice. Well, one thing I wish I was wiser about that you two are good at is uh, money. <laughs> you know, they've always been so smart. They always said, put something away. And, you know, they, they've really done, I wish that we could pay attention to that. Um, invest, you know. Our grandparents are all so wise and we should be asking them more questions. Um, 
I feel like we have a lot at our fingertips, a lot of knowledge. And a lot of times I feel like I read it and I'm like, oh, okay, I did that. Or like I thought about going to the gym, so I did that, but I'm not actually acting on it. So it's nice to sit back and really get some advice and maybe go forward and take it, make some changes. Um, what else, Jana? Is there a question that we missed? What was your best job? What you What do you got for us? Uh, I turned off the, the lights in Beverly Hills at Christmas time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Turn off the lights. Turn off the lights. Oh, 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 Jim did that. Well, well, hey, you guys are a bunch of snobs. Two, All Beverly Hills are first job. Yeah. Yeah. What was the worst job? Worst job? I'll tell you a job I remember. I did turn out the lights in Beverly Hills for at least three years, and Jim did it after I did. Turned Christmas out the Christmas lights. lights up and down Wilshire Boulevard. Huh. Paid $150, $175, which was huge money then. How long did that take you to do that? Like, what was your shit? It melted for like 40 a week. minutes. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> okay, but, but a job I really remember well is but in, when the war started, the Japanese gardeners left Beverly Hills, and Bob and I mowed a lot of the yards. And one yard we mowed one Saturday was the yard right next door to us, and we got 35 cents for it back. back. <laughs> and with that, we went to Thrifty Drug Store, which was Cannon Drive and Wilshire Boulevard. Somehow we scrounged up another nickel, and for that money, we got a hamburger and a malt each. Oh my gosh. 40 wow. cents. Wow. And that's my first job that I really remember well. <laughs> Jim, what was your job? Well, I did the lights too after dinner. Yeah. But I worked in the men's clothing store. Bertzels. Uh, Bertzels. It was a men's and boys clothing store. And I worked there when I was a senior in high school and for four years in college. So I worked there for five years. And I met a lot of movie stars. Um, I, I learned how to be neat. How to dress properly? <laughs> I'm very appropriate. You always look very dapper. And what happened? It was something that I think was very formative in my life. Actually, I worked there, and my mom worked there for 14 years after I did. After oh my I God. Met, she was hired because wow. they liked to have women who could relate to the young mothers. But anyway, that was one of my formative things in my life. Anyone else? Open mic. Anyone have any questions they're dying to ask? Marilyn had her hand up. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, one of, oh, hello. <laughs> one of my first jobs was working at the Paramount Theater in oh. Idaho Falls. And I started out as an usher, and I got 50 cents an hour. Mm -hmm. wow. And we had uniforms, which were beautiful. And then when I worked up to the candy counter, I got 60 cents in oh my oh, money. <laughs> and then I became the cashier wow. out in the front. And I got 75 cents in. Oh, and I got wow. a two-bedroom <laughs> yeah, two apartment. apartment. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I did the same thing, though, but I don't remember how much I got paid. But we had <laughs> uniforms, Fox Wilshire Theater. Very lovely trailer, and I did the same thing as you had candy, and then out in this big. It wasn't connected to the theater. You were just sitting out there by yourself uh, yeah, outside here. Yeah. Yeah. And I think about it today, oh and goodness. it's really scary. <laughs> yeah, I was scared to pop a kiosk in that little hut for so long by myself. What was what was the apartment rent in those days? For like a one bedroom, do you guys remember it all? Uh, we we living in a room apartment. apartment. I don't know. I don't know. Hundred and a quarter for a one bedroom in 1962. And driftwood. That's a Beverly Hills one and a quarter. Without the refrigerator. The first apartment that I rented was with three other guys. And that was right after I left college, and it was two hundred dollars a month. So it cost us fifty dollars each per month. Oh my God. Did, was that and furnished, was all, Jim? And I was only making, yeah, I was furnished, and I was probably making $325 a month. Oh, gosh. Wow. Yeah. And I wasn't I wonder if people are homeless today, you know. One of my first jobs was uh, 
catching snails for Uncle Hale. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we, got, we, we got up to Uncle Hale was my dad. Uh, Uncle Hale was too. <laughs> yeah, we finally got it up to uh, two for two for five cents. <laughs> and we got a lot of them, didn't we, Denny? <laughs> well, Mom used to pay us to get to yeah, kill the snails. Penny, a penny a snail. A penny a snail. <laughs> but, uh, we had ivy. We were taking a hundred in the morning. Another, another, another fun, fun place we worked, people Danny people and I both did, <laughs> was Hillcrest Cadillac. And then Cadillacs in those days, when you looked in them, you knew who was driving them. Because there weren't that many of them in it. In, uh, Basically, we delivered them to all of the movie stars' homes and picked them up. And we have a lot of stories. Uh, when the motorcycle left the car be when you were towing it, Denny had a good episode of that. Uh, I had one pass me on a Maple Drive. How in the hell did they get by me? <laughs> Here comes two, two big black guys in a big, big old truck. Their eyeballs are sticking out. Here comes that. Here comes that. Motorcycle right right at him. You're towing it and it's passing you. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> anyway, we, we had a lot of we had a lot of fun there. <laughs> that was $160 a month. Is that what it was? Yep. Denny, Denny brought home Clark Gable's Cadillac and sat in front of our house. I got in the car and I had my picture taken in Clark Gable's Cadillac. Oh, I still wow. have it. Dad, you have a story. Dad. And Clark Gable was one of the biggest things in Hollywood at that time. Yeah. Denny, you have a story about something that happened to you when you were working for the car dealership and you got in trouble. He got arrested. Yeah. What? Well, well, Papa Jenny. got arrested. Papa? I, I, I'll Pimpin. make it quick. I went to pick up the car. <laughs> no, no, we want detail. Yeah. Pimp Morrow. Who wants a long <laughs> story? <laughs> the the Pimp Morrow connection. Tell us. Yeah. 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 No, tell it, Dad. He had to pick up a car. I, I'll he, tell it. He knocks. Go me. ahead. Went to pick up a car. It was a very Jewish couple in down near Fairfax and uh, Beverly Boulevard. And uh, they were very hard to understand. And they passed me out some keys. And I said, the car was out in front. And they said, yeah, dum, 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 yeah. yeah. So I went to the car, I got in front, I picked up the car out in front, put the keys in the, unlocked it, put the keys in the ignition, took off, had my motorcycle on the back, got halfway back to Beverly Hills. The police pulled me over. The, the, they called it a stolen car. The car that I was supposed to pick up was two doors down in a garage. <laughs> <laughs> the keys fit. So did they arrest you? Oh, that's funny. Oh, awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. I think, you know, it's nice to hear from you and, and get a little insight uh, since we weren't there. And it's so nice to hear the, from you the instead of your father. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I can take you out right now. <laughs> Jim in the back. <laughs> you did a very nice job. Oh, the kick you. to the curb. The kids are taking over. Good job, Haley. Hey, Good, job, Haley. Good job, yeah. Haley. Nice Good job, Haley. 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 I, I don't know what we're doing.